but my body was being marinated in stress and it never got the signal that it was safe from these potential threats and that it could then relax into celebration. And that went on day after day for almost two years. This is what I call my first superwoman peak. I was stuck in the middle of an unrelenting chronic stress cycle every single day. Our bodies are not designed to stay in this physiological state for prolonged periods. It is intended for short periods of quick action to respond to an imminent life threat. If we get stuck there, the physiological response designed to keep us safe can gradually kill us. Hi there lovelies, I'm Rhonda Crimes. I'm a life and leadership coach supporting everyday people just like you to reflect and rework your everyday stories so you can step into the everyday leadership of your families and communities and create compelling, meaningful and fruitful lives every day. Today let's talk about stress and the stressors. Have you ever been in a situation or a circumstance where merely the anticipation of showing up can activate dread, which is like anxiety on steroids, where there is an accumulation of enduring stress that never ends, where the stresses are part of the experience. You can't get rid of them. Like having children or working in a hospital where the patients and the admin go hand in hand, or taking care of an aging parent who just can't do it all on their own anymore, and you simply can't check out or flip them. So maybe you can't change the stressors, but you can get rid of the stress by completing the stress cycle according to Emily and Amelia Nagoski in their book, Burnout, The Secret to Solving the Stress Cycle. So for me, back in the day, there was a gradual build-up working with a couple who would actively sabotage or ridicule each other behind their backs and keep me as their confidant. There was the ongoing manufacturing cycle and little or no systems in place to monitor the stock, the quality control, or the production cycles. It was all done by the seat of their pants, almost whimsical. And then, of course, there would be emergency delays waiting for raw ingredients, or to swap out the machinery to change the production. And I was the one to inform the customers. Never that the fault was what it was, inept managing and a lack of forward planning, but because of a mechanical fault, a supplier's delivery delay. It was always put as someone else's fault and I had to do the lying and then scramble to place the emergency order to the supplier or reschedule the whole load that was due to go out the next day. I was always on the back foot, making up excuses and having to make instant decisions. Now, those of you who know me know this is a major stressor for me. I like to take my time to think things through, project a number of steps out in all possible directions and come from a really solid foundation. And on top of all of that, my dad had been terminally ill and then gradually passed away. But I didn't take any time off work other than to attend his wake. I pushed it all down, the grief, the sadness, the loss. 
I didn't have time for that. The business needed rescuing and I had been charged with that brief. I endured this role until thankfully a school job appeared on the horizon and I left after a number of other staff had also reached their limits of endurance. That all started in 2006. What I didn't realise though, until more recently, is that dealing with your stress is completely different to dealing with the things that cause your stress. So while I had removed myself from those stressors, the stress was still there, captured in every cell of my being, silently growing, waiting for a moment of release that would take everyone, including me, by surprise further down the track. Let's just take a sidestep and talk about what stress and stressors can look like because they can be really different for all of us. And likewise, they can have differing impacts and manifestations in our lives. Stressors are the things that activate or trigger our stress responses. Um, they can involve all of our senses of smell, taste, touch, sight and sound. They can be real or imagined. Our brains actually struggle to differentiate. Which is why, and play along with me, if I say, close your eyes just now, well, go on, close your eyes, and imagine cutting into a juicy, ripe lemon. Now, in your mind's eye, raise the lemon to your nose and breathe in its fruity aroma. Oh, you can smell it. Now put your tongue on the lemon's juicy flesh. If you do this exercise fully, your mouth will respond with an actual sensation, just as it would if the lemon were real. Stresses are no different to this. What we perceive could do harm, or what is a real threat, will activate our stress responses. Stresses can be external, like experiences of discrimination, cultural expectations, or work, money and family obligations, or shortfalls. <laughs> they can be internal, like body image stories, self-criticism, self-identity conflicts and constraints, memories, and projections of the future. Anything that can be interpreted as a threat is a stressor. Now, stress is the physiological and neurological changes that occur in our body when one of these real or perceived threats is met. It's centred in our animal brain, the part of us that has changed so very little despite the countless improvements and advancements to our lifestyles. Evolution is a slow process and our environments have been changing at warp speed by comparison. This emotional brain of ours has just not kept up. So like when you hit a series of red lights on the way to work and you're already late, your animal brain is still responding as if a saber-toothed tiger was at the cave entrance. When your brain notices this stressor, it activates a generic stress response of fight, flight or freeze through neurological and hormonal activities that initiate the physiological changes to help you survive. Without going into specific changes, 
It can be said that your entire body goes through the changes to deal with the current stressor. From hormonal levels to digestion to heart rate to pain responses and mental focus. It all changes to meet this real or imagined threat. And while you deal with this threat or stressor, it doesn't mean you've dealt with the stress. To do that, the Nagoski sisters say you need to complete the cycle. Stress has a beginning, middle and end. Our stress response was created to meet the stresses of our primal ancestor. Where there was the saber-toothed tiger and the response was to either run away to safety or to keep really still and hope it didn't see you. Or to actually attack and kill the tiger. Then there would have been celebrations of your safety or a feast with the tribe and much dancing to display gratitude for the bravery of the hunters and pay homage to the sacrifice of the tiger. And then you collapse in the joy and contentment surrounded by your clan, calm and comforted in the knowledge your body is safe once again. The stress response is complete. Our stress response is perfectly paired with the original environment where it evolved. The behaviour that dealt with the tiger was the behaviour that dealt with the stress response cycle. So then, it's not too much of a stretch to think, well, if you just remove the tiger, the stress would be removed. But this isn't the case. If you were running away from the tiger and you suddenly realise it isn't behind you anymore, you are still in a hypervigilant flight response state, breathing heavily, blood pumping vigorously and not a calm thought in your head. In fact, if you can't see the tiger, the stress response may become even more heightened. You will need to do something to signal to your brain that your body is safe once more. The stress response cycle needs to be completed and removing the stressor isn't enough. So now to bring it back to our more current times, imagine you're approaching an intersection. You have the right of way, but the car on your right who should stop at the stop sign doesn't. You instantly become activated into a stress response. You put your defense driving training into play and there is no collision. The stressor has gone. But you have all sorts of elevated sensations and experiences going on inside your body. The stressor was eliminated, but your body is still fully charged. You still need to do something to let your body know you're safe. At this point, your body is still stuck in the middle of the stress response. It's not enough to simply say, phew, that was a close call, I'm okay. You have to do something to signal to your body you're safe. Until this is done, your body will remain in this stressed state, never able to fully return to its relaxed state of safeness. All your systems remain hypervigilant and in overdrive, responding to the still perceived threat. So having a glimpse back into my experience, I was in a constant supply of stressors coming at me from all directions unhappy customers, irritated suppliers, confused employees, irresponsible bosses, a dying father, a mother beginning to become forgetful, which we all put down to her stress fueled life supporting dad, plus parenting three teenagers on the side. I couldn't eliminate my stressors. That was outside of my control. 
I tried going to the owners to talk about how to improve workflow and cash flow on so many occasions. But they simply couldn't agree to any strategy that wasn't their own. I couldn't leave the job. We needed the money. And you know, one of their saving graces was that they were sympathetic, allowing flexibility with my hours to fit around my teenage children's school, sport and social requirements. And they were really nice people, just not great at business. But my body was being marinated in stress and it never got the signal that it was safe from these potential threats and that it could then relax into celebration. And that went on day after day for almost two years. This is what I call my first superwoman peak. I was stuck in the middle of an unrelenting chronic stress cycle every single day. Our bodies are not designed to stay in this physiological state for prolonged periods. It is intended for short periods of quick action to respond to an imminent life threat. If we get stuck there, the physiological response designed to keep us safe can gradually kill us unless we do something to complete the stress response cycle. Just as we need water to respond to thirst, food to fuel us, and sleep replenishment for our well-being, we also need to provide our bodies with the resources it needs to complete the stress response cycle when it's been activated. From my own experience, if we don't provide this resource opportunity regularly, our bodies will buckle and we will burn out or become really ill. And there is never a good time for that. I'm going to leave it there for this chat. This is a really meaty topic and I want to give you time to curiously explore your own stress, stress or relationship and bring some conscious awareness to how you manage your stress response cycle. This might be the first you've heard of it. I know it was for me, and it all makes so much sense for me as I look back to learn from my past experiences. And as I look forward, I'm filled with more optimism that I will be able to manage my own stress response cycles better. And in doing that, not be living in fear of my next burnout waiting for that shoe to drop. The irony of that being a stressor in and of its own is not lost on me. So, while you ponder the stress relationship that you have going on and you find that your now is not the picture you've painted for yourself and you'd like any help on this discovery path or maybe something else that you intuitively know or feel isn't letting your true colours shine through, please get in touch with me. You can do it really easily by leaving a comment, sending me a private message, dropping me an email, or popping over to my Calendly online diary using the link I've provided, and then we can set up an obligation-free curiosity call and have a chat to see if we're a good fit for each other. Much love. Till next time.